Hello everyone, this is Jasim Mudlik from KSARS Project and today I'm going to demo to you some of the latest features in ECUS KSARS Asset Photography Tool that is going to come up in the next KDE 4.12 release and so uh, one of the primary features in the new release is a support for astrometrical solutions uh, using astrometry.net and we use that enable to get really accurate go to by plate solving a couple of images in the sky that would then guide the telescope to really sub arc second accuracy so let's go ahead and uh, illustrate that let's go to ECUS and start it and here I selected the telescope driver as EQ mod my telescope is Orion Atlas and I can use a SYN scan driver but I prefer to use the EQ mod driver because it has a lot of features. My CCD is QSI CCD, Quantum Scientific Instrument uh, CCD, and I don't have anything else here, so um, I will just start with this setup. So we started ND, that was fine, and now we just connecting the devices. And it will take a while to connect to the CCD. And um, I forgot to actually turn on my telescope. Okay, let me just go turn that on and let me connect again here. All right, there we go, beautiful. So now it's working fine and uh, this is a key mode uh, Indie driver. If you go to the Align tab, uh, we need to disable the upload here because we don't want this blob data regarding the points and triangulation to go back to um, KSRs. We also hear the alignment mode set up by default to N star. We don't really have to worry about that, it just builds the model by itself every time we sync and um, uh, one thing to really be sure about is this, uh, when you go to site management tab you have to be sure that the scope location and the time is set up correctly uh, it is set automatically by KSRs but just to make sure all right so uh, let's go ahead and we see here the CCD tab with our CCD and the focus tab which we're not going to use and this is the alignment tab it might look intimidating at first but it's really easy to use we have two uh, modes we have the go to and the polar alignment mode uh, we're not going to use the polar alignment mode today but it's really easy to use to measure the uh, polar alignment arrow so for the go to mode we have the solution coordinates here and the uh, telescope coordinates and um, the, huge, the first thing we have to do is uh, if we find a solution it will sync the telescope coordinate to the solution coordinate that's the first thing first thing it does if it find the solutions or it can slow a target or uh, the last option it will just um, show the solution without doing anything here we see the options that we can pass to the solver uh, which you usually don't have to play with. Here are the right ascension declination search uh, uh, area. If you want to make the solver run faster, we can specify where to look for uh, when it runs the solver. So just to limit the area of the search. But we don't have to sol use that unless it, it is really necessary. So I just uh, pointed my telescope to the north, roughly toward Polaris. Um, and uh, this is this is the starting position now. It has no alignment points set up before. It's just a, a row telescope pointing north, uh, and that's it. And so uh, what we will do now is uh, uh, we will actually try to go to a star. So let's select something nearby. Let's select this star, and let's uh, uh, slew to it. Let's track it. So let's go ahead and do that and the telescope is now moving there and of course uh, realistically it, it's not gonna go be there at dead center otherwise we don't want we don't have to do any any of this asymmetry stuff right uh, but it will go close to it within a within a couple of degrees let's say so it is there so let's go and now um, let's let's try uh, to find a solution for that area so and let's select select a uh, salute target which means that if it finds a solution it will sync to that whatever that solution is and then it will um, salute to the target so now we start and uh, the first 
thing we do is to capture an image and um, actually that's taking too long oh I know why uh, I didn't set the the pinning for the image it's it's one by one now so let me let me go ahead and and um, stop that and um, so so let's go to any control panel to the QSI CCD here and the image setting and let's set the pinning to 4.4 QSI CCD is really good CCD but they're really the download rate is really slow so uh, setting it 4 by 4 will just make it go so much faster so let's just restart that capture an image for two seconds and let's just wait until the capture is done. okay there it is so now the solver is starting and the SMRT.NET solver um, it's usually pretty quick if you have all the index files necessary and uh, but sometimes it can take up to one or two minutes until it finds a solution especially since we didn't restrict it to search in a specific um, area in the sky it's just gonna look all over the sky from its catalogs and um, yeah usually the first time you run it here it takes um, it takes quite a while to find a solution but all you have to do is wait and you don't really have to um, do any of this alignment with your telescope the usual two or three star alignment using this method is um, is usually much much faster and more convenient than doing it otherwise okay so, so this is this is uh, funny. In, in the demo, it's it's taking a long time to solve, but um, this it's good that it's doing this now because this is something that you might typically encounter when you actually run it. And so, what we'll do, we will actually try to um, to copy the telescope coordinates to the solver. Uh, but let's just, just just give it some time to see if it comes comes up with a solution if it doesn't we'll run it again but this time we'll restrict it to a small area in the sky to search for this way it will uh, run faster and uh, I'd like to mention also that all the indie and asymmetry.net packages are available for uh, Ubuntu under my PPA which can be found in the uh, in the links here the only thing that you have to download afterwards is the uh, index files for the uh, sky marks that's suitable for your setup and uh, usually case stars would tell you which index files you have to download um, but you can also figure this out from going to the astromotive.net website it will tell you which indexes to download uh, another thing is is that you have to set up um, uh, if you go to the uh, QSI CCD if you go to the image info you'll find out that uh, the pixel size here is set up the resolution and things and this information is, infer is really critical for uh, K stars Another thing is that scope properties like the average and focal length. This is very critical for you to set it up for your telescope, so that we know the field of view we're looking at exactly. So these are a couple of parameters that are empty when the driver first loads, and you have to set it up and then save the configuration. Okay, so so let's stop that. It took a long time, and then let's restart it now. But as we see now we are limited to a specific area in the sky to search for and now it's starting the solver again hopefully it doesn't really take a long time oh there we go eight seconds see that and we see it here actually see if you, we see it here it, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it was synced first to the actual location which was to the left of that star and then it's all over to that star in Cassiopeia and um, and usually after after the, this happens this is the first point in the alignment that is added to the n star alignment mode of the EQ mode driver 
and the more stars you add there the more accurate the model becomes so um, usually three stars is, is really good uh, um, a good number for a simple um, model but the more stars you add the better it is and uh, usually what we do after this what I do is I would go and take an image and uh, verify that it is really center you don't have to believe what the uh, driver is telling you so let's go ahead and take a take an image and make sure that it's really centered around that star so let's take a 4 by 4 binning one second exposure and let's wait for the results and there we go that's uh that looks very uh, centered to me that's a uh, very dead in the center okay so so we got that our first star centered we got our first sync point uh in the model so that's great so now let's try to go to uh, another star and uh, add another sync point there so let's uh, I'm just selecting randomly um, from whatever star so let's just select this star over here and um, let's go to EQ mod and let's track and once we go there we need also to run the solver but we need to update the coordinates let's not forget that so we just hit that copy icon to update the coordinates there we go and uh, let's uh, capture and solve again so it's capturing an image now and the uh, solver just just started wow two seconds see that's really fast and uh, if you notice there was very little movement there because it was really already very close to the target and so we all do this for uh, astrophotography uh, at least what I, this is what I do it for so let's go and some target like M31 and let's see if just by adding two sync points here that we got a really good uh, go to now so let's go and take a five second exposure for uh, M31 and this is the star we saw before let's just wait until um, until M31 and I yep it, there it is in the middle let's auto stretch that and there it is that's ladies and gentlemen M31 dead in the center and that's very easy to do we had no alignment at all when we first powered on the telescope and just by adding two sync points using uh, and, and we didn't have to look in the eyepiece and or look at the, uh, the CCD to figure out where we are it was all done by the asymmetry.net uh, solution so uh, thanks a lot guys for watching and hopefully you enjoy um, this feature in your uh, astrophotography gear whenever you get the chance to use it